Hello again, I am Blunty, and these are the new Razor War. Razor War? No, that's wrong. <laughs> Hello again, I am Blunty, and these are Razor's new Man of War gaming headset. And what makes these particularly special for Razor in particular are it's their first wireless gaming headset. They are not without fault, but they are damn nice. And for the entirety of this review, you will be hearing my voiceover from the microphone on the Razer Man of War, so you can get a real nice long listen to exactly how it sounds. Microphone tests being something that just ridiculous numbers of people who review these things on YouTube seem to forget to do entirely, which just drives me up the wall, which is why I always pay lots of attention to the microphone for you guys. But let's get to it. So let's take a closer look at the headset. It has one nifty feature right off the bat that I want to show you, and that's an itty bitty docking station for its little USB transmitter receiver dongle thingamabobadadoodler thingy. Now that seems like a small detail, but it does mean you can store or indeed travel with this thing without ever worrying about accidentally losing the dongle or having a little baggie to put it in or a special case you have to put it in to make sure you don't lose it, that kind of stuff you usually see with these kind of headsets. Basically, it makes it harder to lose and thus rendering the entire headset pointless and useless. It's just a nice bit of thoughtful design and I appreciate that kind of stuff. Now, moving on. Looks, sound, microphone, and obviously as a wireless device, battery life are all the important things we need to worry about here. Looks first. As you can see, it's pretty bulky. Even by gaming headset standards, it's bulky. Big, chunky headband, big, chunky ear cups, each housing 50mm drivers, and big, very, very soft leatherette-covered padding. It feels quite well put together, actually. The materials feel high quality and generally pleasant to handle and wear. There is a slight amount of plasticky creaking noise when you're handling it or moving the ear cups on their swivels, but once it's actually on your head and properly adjusted, this was never an issue in use. I never heard it creak or squeak once while it was on my head. Aside from the flush-mounted little power switch, there are two other controls for level adjustments for the audio and the microphone. Both simple rotary dials with a very satisfying tactile feedback and clicking them in will mute the audio and the microphone respectively. And when the microphone is muted, they've done the very clever thing of making a little red LED ring light up around the tip of the microphone. Now, Razer aren't the first to think of this. It's actually rather similar to the SteelSeries Siberia Elites. But not being the first to do it is irrelevant because it is an immensely useful feature, as you can instantly tell right there in your peripheral vision if your mic is muted or not. In my opinion, every headset should do this. The mic also slurps away back into the ear cup like a piece of spaghetti, just like the Razer Kraken Pros do, of course, to keep it perfectly out of your way when you're not actually using it. And also, of course, as a Razer product, it has their Chroma integration. In this case, the Razer logo on either ear cup can light up in any color you like. It does the steady blink, or fades, or steady on, or color cycling, all that kind of stuff that this stuff usually kind of does. I still think putting lights like this on a headset on a device in a place where the user themselves will never actually see them is a bit silly, but whatever. But given how large this headset is, I mean, it even looks large on my enormous buff head for crying out loud. It's not as heavy as it looks. It's actually reasonably comfortable to wear, even for very long periods of time. I mean, it's not sort of the featherweight, am I even wearing it kind of lightweight stuff like the the, the, the Rig 500s from uh, Plantronics. It's more in the area of the Steel Series Siberia Elites. In fact, the whole size and sort of shape and bulk of them is pretty similar to those. But unlike the, the Rig 500s and the Siberia Elite I just mentioned, these have the huge advantage of being wireless but yeah you do pay for the wirelessnessness factor of being extra bulky and extra heavy uh, because you've got to have transmitters in there you've got to have battery packs in there and the charging circuitry and all that sort of stuff you don't normally have inside a headset but while the weight of it isn't insignificant i have worn this for a very extended you know gaming sessions like five six hours at a time and i never once felt uncomfortable in them they never felt like they were putting too much pressure on me or weighing me down or you know pressing here against my head or anything i never felt like i had to take them off mid-session or i had to stop playing because I just couldn't stand them anymore. Your mileage will vary, of course. Comfort is a very personal thing. I'm just telling you what I experienced. And speaking of long sessions, being wireless is useless for a gaming headset unless, of course, it has the battery life to survive those long gaming sessions many of us enjoy as we sink into a nice immersive game without having to scramble to find a cord to charge a thing up. 
And here you'll find a rated 12 hour battery life or 7 days of gaming use they claim on the box. Which will obviously range a bit depending on your volume settings and if you're using the mic and indeed how long you game for at any one particular time. But that 12 hour mark did seem fairly on the ball to me. And that does of course put it on par with a couple of other popular options for wireless gaming headsets. Sound quality is very satisfying actually, not up to the standards of a picky audio file, but the sound is crisp in the highs, there's plenty of bass without making things sound muddy and awful, and the mids are very clean indeed. And thankfully, it's not idiotically bass heavy like all too many headsets are these days, even Bluetooth speakers for that matter. It is in fact designed to sound good, not to thump idiotically along with today's terrible, terrible, overproduced, catastrophically, dynamically compressed within an inch of its life music. There is a soft, ever-present background hiss, quite noticeable under silence, which sadly many, if not most, wireless headsets suffer from. But it wasn't something you'll notice in actual gameplay or music or movies or whatever, so not really a deal breaker. And there's actually a lot of room to move with the EQ as well. The sound is quite customizable, but I found the default settings entirely adequate for most things, only really bothering to push things around a bit when I was listening to pure music. The simulated 7.1 surround sound worked nicely too. It is simulated, of course, so while it absolutely expands the sound stage and wraps it around you pretty convincingly, it's not nearly as defined as a true multi-speaker setup will be. But I'd still rather have simulated 7.1 than not at all. In pure stereo mode, it's pretty damn delightful as far as the sound stage goes. Now... As for the mic, well, of course, you've been listening to it through this entire review. Every single word you've heard from me has been recorded on the Matterwars mic. It's got great clarity, a pretty low noise floor. There are noise cancelling options and stuff in the software that will help you get a worse sounding but cleaner voice signal if you're in a noisy environment. But they do sound pretty tinny and awful as you'd expect from this kind of feature. But of course, what you are hearing is the unaltered mic. No extra processing at all. And while for things like voice chat, video calls, and in-game chat, Discord, that kind of thing, it's absolutely fine. Quite good, even. Now, for me, as a YouTuber, as a Twitch streamer, it is not a microphone I would use for those purposes. You've been hearing it for yourself. It's a little bit thin, a little bit tinny. There are a little bit, there's a lot of sibilance there. I mean, it's very, you know, well-behaved when it comes to popping, popping and huffing and puffing and stuff, you know, and a lot of that is where you position the microphone. That That's something a lot of people just... They put it too close to their mouth and everything. It sort of sounds really awful like this. <laughs> no, idiots. Just learn to move your microphone away from your mouth. They're sensitive. They're fine. But the thing about the sound is like 98% of the gaming headsets out there, it is designed for voice clarity, not richness of sound when it comes to the microphone. And that's, that's you know, that's a very wide river between those two needs. I need... The one that sounds really nice, that sounds, you know, close to a studio mic. I don't need absolute studio quality clarity thing. I just want something that sounds rich, that gives, you know, makes my voice sound like a proper voice, not sound like a voice that's coming through an AM radio from 1982 or something. And it is a pity, it is a disappointment that the microphone on this headset isn't better because I know Razer know how important really good sounding microphones are because... <laughs> This is the Razer Siren. This is the Razer Siren Pro, actually, but they both make sound the same, just have a few different features. I use this almost daily, literally almost daily. Pretty much any video you hear where it's just me with a voiceover, it's this. A lot of the stuff I do to camera is even at the desk here. It's this. You know, when I'm out and about, obviously, this isn't, you know, a, a microphone you can use out in the world. But that's a different story. But, you know, this is a really, really good sounding studio quality uh, sort of microphone. So I know, Razer know. How, how important that sound is, how, uh, you know, how many people out there are desiring really good sounding mics because more and more and more of us are doing stuff here on, on the YouTubes and doing, you know, Twitch streaming and all that sort of stuff. It's very, very popular. There's a big market for it. I just, I want them to make a headset like this, maybe a little bit smaller and lighter, but with a much better microphone on it so I can be, you know, wireless while I Twitch stream and sound great and sound great here. It's just, you know. That's 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 my wish list. The point is, <laughs> I've been waffling here for way too long about the microphone. It sounds pretty good. It's good enough for the kind of purposes that most people are going to want from this. Yeah? So, to wrap up, 
nicely built, nice sounding, decent mic unless you're after studio-like sound, and some real nice attention to detail played throughout the entire design, and plenty of fine control options in the software to tweak the sound how you like it best. If a wireless gaming mic tickles your want button, the Razer Manowar is absolutely, without a question, something that should be on your shortlist when you're making your decision. It's a really nicely put together bit of kit. I like it. So thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.